Miranda, after the publication of two biographies, you turn to writing historical fiction. Why the change from biography, from fact to fiction? That's a very good question. Well, uh, it had taken me 15 years to write two books. Um, and when you're writing those big historical books, especially when they're biographies, sometimes it can feel as if you are sort of submerged in that book for years and years and years. And it's quite a sort of dark place and you only come out when the book is published. And I just felt after those two books, I couldn't go back down for another seven years. I wanted something that was a different pace. Uh, and at the same time, I had for some years, really about 10 years, been thinking about writing uh, a, a book about a sort of historical uh, detective. Um, I was sort of intrigued by the idea of being able to use history. History is always my sort of first inspiration. You know, I'm fascinated by particular periods and, and sort of political background. And, um, and I thought I knew exactly where I wanted to put this character. And I wanted to be able to uh, use the history I had, but also to play around with it. So it would be—I felt it would be a very different kind of exercise, but very challenging because mm. I didn't know whether I could do plot. I didn't know whether I could sort of take nothing, as it were, and come up with something. Because of course, when you're writing history, you know what the story is. So it was—it felt like a different kind of challenge, and one that I was very, very ready to try. And also, um, I wanted to write something sort of shorter, at uh, a different kind of pace. R rather than an 800-page biography. Yes. yes. Uh, the books are called The Strangler Vine, The Printer's Coffin, and The Devil's Feast. Yes. They're set in, the uh, first one set in India, the second one, I think, is in set in London. In, in the London. other two are set in London. So this is the 1830s, 1840s. Exactly. Can you tell us a little bit about the two protagonists? Because they're kind of a little bit like Dr. Watson and Sherlock Holmes, aren't they? I suppose they are. Do you know what? When I was writing it, I know it may sound completely ridiculous, but it just never occurred to me. <laughs> I just didn't. What happened was I started out with my the person I think of as my protagonist, who is a character called um, Jeremiah Blake. Uh, and I wanted a sort of working class uh, autodidact as it were, detective, investigator person. Uh, and that was always, I was always interested in him and where he'd come from. And the idea that you have a character who, who can see all the way sort of up and down Victorian society um, and, and sort of comment on it. Um, and then I was thinking about how I would write this book. And you have all sorts of choices to make. Are you going to write something that's third person? Are you going to write something that's first person? If you're going to write it first person, if you, if you have your uh, protagonist writing, uh, you know, speaking, does that slightly detract from the mystery? Because I wanted him to be slightly mysterious. And so I ended up inventing another, another character to tell the story. Who is an ex-soldier, an ex-soldier who's also the narrator. Yes. At that point, surely you must have thought, I didn't think this that is like, because the, 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 the clever <laughs> one, as it were, yeah. is very Sherlock Holmes-like. I mean, much more Robert Downey Jr. perhaps yes. than, but then Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. But it's that kind of... I suppose, do you know what? I actually was thinking at the time, I, I, was very, I very much liked um, a series of, uh, of books uh, by Patrick O'Brien about mm -hmm. uh, um, a character called Maturin and, oh my goodness, I can't remember the other. He, one of them is a captain and the other one is a sort of Irish spy. One of them is a sort of man of action and the other one is, is uh, a sort of botanist, spy, very intellectual. And they have this wonderful relationship that sort of played out and built up over several books. And it was that sort of partnership that intrigued me. I sort of ended up with this, uh, this, this sort of... Because it's such a class, so for, yeah. it's just such a classical I thing. Know, it's I all know, I know. Because it's also Hercule Poirot and, yeah, and, and, and Captain Hastings, Yes, course. I suppose, except that I like the fact that they didn't really get on and they sort of bicker. And the other yeah. thing is that the, you know, the, 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 the lead figure is the, is the person of lower status. You know, he's the working class guy. So the rest of the world looks at them and thinks the young posh guy must be in charge, but he isn't, you know, and he's sort of not as clever. And yeah. so I, I like the sort of subversion of that. You know, these were the things I was thinking about, but well, I suppose well, we could accept, yeah. you know. No, no, it must be irritating because I'm sure everyone says that. I suppose, but, but I don't then mind. It's, I it, mean, it's it, flattering. It doesn't make the, the observation wrong, of course. No. Why did you change your name for that? Because you published the biographies as Miranda Carter and then the fiction became MJ Carter. Well, it's a very interesting question. Uh, one initially I was rather wary of. Uh, my, the publishers who 
who, wanted, who bought the book, there were several publishers who were interested, and they all said, if you publish this book, you have to publish as a gender-neutral name or men won't pick it up. And I said, really? You know, in 2014, whenever it was. And they said, well, that's just how this stuff goes. So, you know, you'll have to be MJ yeah, I Carter. Thought it was, I thought that was going to be the answer. And I just wrote down a few names. Agatha Christie, Dorothy L. Sayers, Patricia Highsmith, Patricia Cornwell. And the, the list goes on but and on. Don't Sh forget. Are they all, they're surely not all bought by, by women. No, they aren't. But Patricia Cornwell is, uh, her protagonist is a woman. Um, Patricia Highsmith was published in the 20s and things have changed a lot since, since then. Um, there, I think things have got... Mu in, there are very interesting and slightly toxic ways in which uh, I think gender has become more niche and, you know, this wouldn't have happened 30 years ago. Yeah. But did it, it annoy now. you at the time that it I did annoy told me. you that? It did annoy because me. Because also for a writer, the name is kind of... Yes, yeah, it's, your, it's, your, it's identity, your identity, isn't it? Yeah. It did annoy me, but then actually, I quite like the idea of having a separate identity uh, for as the a for these, as yes. a fiction writer. And the other thing was, I was rather tickled by the fact that it was the case with the first book that quite a lot of readers, writers, seem, readers seem to think that I was a man, and that slightly amused me. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it, it worked out all right, but I have to say, initially, I was very irritated. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah I, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, is detective fiction for you, is that also like it is for John le Carré, is a kind of form of social criticism uh, as, as well? Uh, your first novel centres on, on the, the thuggy, this is a religious or quasi-religious group or association of robbers and, and, and murderers in, in India, but it turns out that the British are using this group really as a kind of justificatory myth for their own for their own activities. Absolutely, And yes. there's a wonderful uh, quotation in, in the book, uh, and I just, I'll just read this to you. Uh, uh, even if not, a, so this is the, 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 the defense of, of, of a rather uh, a problematic uh, uh, guy. Even if not everyone he arrested was strictly uh, a, a, th a thug, Major uh, Sleeman has made the roads of India safe. The campaign, the campaign against thuggy shows the natives that we have the de determination and, yes, the ruthlessness to destroy a murderous caste thousands, thousands of years old, an immutable evil woven into the very fabric of this country. It shows that the company, this is the East India Company, cares for their welfare. It shows that we uh, are, are up to sort of defending our own, uh, our own interests. Um, and, and it says, hundreds of men have been killed to prove that Hind is degenerate and we should rule it. And, and it sort of go, goes on really yes. s saying, you know, this is what seems to be a fight against the thuggy. It's is actually, actually the British creating this myth that they need in order to justify their, their rule. imperialism. Absolutely. And if you read that, I didn't read the whole quotation, but if you read that, it, it, I thought it was eerily reminiscent of stuff that's going on right now. Oh yes, now. no question. It, so it is not just, to, to the extent that one can say it at all, it's not just uh, detective stories that really, again, very much like John the Carey, the sort of the detective and the detecti detective story is a way into society. Yes, is, is absolutely true. I mean, um, for me, one of the things that has always, always interests me about history is when you can see sort of resonances and parallels with the present. And I felt very much, you know, the, the East India Company in the book is very much like a sort of a global multinational. Uh, sinister global multinational and the way that uh, at the moment uh, we see you know exploitation of um, you know of, of uh, low-paid workers in places like China it seems to be very much like the way that workers were exploited in England during the Industrial Revolution you know I think you know these things are repeated over and over yeah. again and at the same time then I would imagine I mean that's the way I read it anyway yeah. the terrorists are sort of they obviously do horrible things, but yeah. then at the same time they are used as a to sort of tarnish a whole whole group. Exactly, absolutely, and that's certainly actually the whole idea of sort of caste in India w was very much taken up and used by the British. I don't think anybody would would, dis would dispute that I as a way of justifying their rule. So yes, I mean there is a sort of political thing in, in the books, and I'm interested in writing about that. For me, I love the detective fic um, genre, uh, the, the crime genre, because I do think it it. It's, it's such a sort of wonderful, wide, baggy thing that it allows you to put all sorts of really fascinating things in the envelope. And social commentary is certainly one of them. There are lots of very good 
I mean, for example, um, the Scottish writer Ian Rankin mm -hmm. uses detective fiction as a way of writing about contemporary Scotland. You know, um, I think there are lots of, of good uh, crime writers who are sort of doing that. And uh, I, I also have been very, always very interested in the idea of genre. When I was a kid, I used to watch cowboy movies and, and Hollywood musicals. And I love the idea of the, of the envelope and then the things you can do sort of to push at the edges, but sort of keep yourself within, within the frame. Within that, the I find that very yeah. interesting. And yeah. I find that for me, I'd rather write genre fiction than what you might other you might call uh, literary fiction you know I'm, I'm very interested by the sort of tropes and the uh, and the things you you sort of have to do to make it work and then the other things you can do all over the place so for example in in, in the books there are all sorts of little references to things like heart of darkness and yes uh, there are little quotes from voltaire and montaigne and things but if you don't get any of them at all, it really doesn't it, matter, it's, right? It's just the sort of, you know, they're it, little it, games it, for me. It, it still and works, they so have this multi-layeredness yeah. uh, to it, yeah. Yeah, okay. that, I love the idea that's, that fiction yeah, does that, can do that. that yeah. That's great. Thank you for doing this. Pleasure. Episode.